Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a 3D printed puzzle using a picture file and we're going to use Simplify 3D and NetFab standard to do that. Now, alternatively, we could use different software to generate the STL file. Um, originally, uh, I'm using Simplify 3D just to show you how to do that. That's really easy. Uh, not any other option, you could use um, 3D Builder from Windows to generate it or you could u do a lithophane from the 3DP Rocks web lithophane website. So any way you want to, to take your picture file and generate it into an STL file, you get the first part done, but then after that we'll use NetFab to show you how to cut it into um, puzzle pieces. Uh, so first in Simplify 3D, you can go up to Add-ins and Convert Image to 3D, select your image file, um, you can just kind of play with these settings. Some of them um, work work better than others. The the Gaussian ratio or factor probably have that around one. Um, the platform height is sort of the the minimum height you'll have anywhere. Um, anyways, when you're done with that, you can import, generate the file and import it, and then go over and import it into Autodesk NetFab standard and the STL file comes in nice and easy. Um, we need to make sure that we convert the view to the top view because whenever we do our puzzle cut we're going to um, you know, cut from the plane that we're looking at. So go to the top view um, and then you go up to select the free cut block um, and then select your polygon the sort of generalize where you want the puzzle lines to go. After you get the first set of, of puzzle cuts in place, you can kind of adjust these, um, you know, use the, the yellow boxes here to adjust exactly where you want it. From there you click the, what looks like a, a dovetail joint, but you can select different types. So from here I'm picking the puzzle type. Um, you can select uh, how many. For this one I want it to be three wide by two tall. So I'm just going to select too tall on this one. Um, select how big you want the puzzle connection to be. And when you, you kind of hit apply to see exactly what it looks like. But then after that, you just go down and click cut, and it will cut the STL file for you. Okay, and there we have the cut STL file. Um, from there, we just essentially select the file again, and we want to cut it back across the other direction. But we want, you know, in this case, we're going to um, do the same process almost exactly. The only real difference is going to be we're going to, because we want it to be three wide, we got to set it for three puzzle pieces. So you can draw the polygon, um, generally where you want that, and set the dimensions the same as the other one. So you don't want to be too clean with your cuts, because if the puzzle's too square, um, they'll try to they'll almost line up in any direction. Um, because we are making the, the connections the same. So you could make some of the, the actual puzzle interconnects a little bit different in size so that it's it's harder to put together incorrectly. But the other way to do that is just have things be at off angles and so things that won't line up in more than one orientation. So once it's done, again, you can ch check these, remove these little red boxes to slide things around, and then hit cut, and it will slice through the STL files again. Okay, then once you're done with that cut, you can go up and hit the little plus sign here, and you can see the different cuts you made. So from the first, what's left over from the first cut, there's a couple there, and there's a couple down here, but you can see that they're grouped together. Um, so what we need to do is go down here to modify and 
split um, the shells so we can s split those two pieces into or that, that one piece into two pieces I'm um, doing it again for the top pair and now we have six individual pieces that we can select all individual all the six of them uh, and export them as an STL may need to go back through and look at each of these um, files here because there will be some duplicates and you know hide the ones that you don't want uh, some leftover shells that, that aren't of aren't of interest so once you figure out which ones exactly you need then you can just um, hold control and collect click all the ones that you need that you want and then right click export them as an STL Um, and you can do it all in one file together if you want. Or what I ended up doing was splitting them up into six individual files. So uh, you can do that and, and create individuals with, with their own ID. Um, select where you want it. Um, give the general file name and then it will tack on a number at the end of them. Um, additionally, there were some manifold edges that I think are generated from the cutting process. So you can sort of clean those up. Once you've got those cleaned up, you export them, save it, um, and then we can see we've got all our six files here. Go back to simplify, remove the, the base STL, and import the puzzle pieces. So uh, we can sort of try and line them up to make sure that everything seems to fit properly. And everything looks pretty good. Um, and lines up properly so then all we have to do is is place them around the table where we want on the build plate um, get the proper slicing setting set up and slice it and send it to print Once you get everything lined up, one key feature that you have to do, um, because we did a zero thickness slice here, is we've set the horizontal size um, compensation to allow, essentially bring the the perimeter in on all pieces. So um, I moved it a, a tenth of a millimeter in, in all directions from each for each piece. So that'll be a, a essentially make it a 0.2 millimeter gap um, for all the pieces. Um, uh, additionally, I, I, you know, set the bottom half to to print a little faster at, at higher layer heights and less infill, and then the top, I uh, adjusted that to be a little finer, get a little bit more resolution in the, in the top layers. Okay, and after it was done printing, um, turned out pretty good. I took it off and put a base coat on to try and make it look like the original picture, and then filled in some of the other features, and you can see it in puzzle form there. Um, and then once it assembled, it turned out pretty decent. So um, it's not perfect by any means, but it's a good little puzzle, easy to make, easy to print. Um, painting took the longest for sure. <laughs>